Hi, everyone. Really exciting to be introduced by Doug Cutting, right? Father of Hadoop. How cool is that? Uh, you know, my experience with Hadoop actually started back in 2009. I was at a little search engine company called Indeca. And we were working with some folks in the government who had the need to ingest a whole bunch of data into that search engine so they could do faceted search, information discovery. Um, and, and that product just couldn't handle the, the data ingest. So we started, one of our, our smart engineers found this thing called Hadoop and, uh, and basically built a, an ETL pipeline, a little MapReduce job that allowed us to create these inverted indexes that Indeca used. Uh, on the fly. And like overnight, we went from 10x the amount of data we could ingest in a tenth of the time. Some staggering statistic like that. Um, and back then, you know, Hadoop was super obscure, particularly in, you know, outside of this sort of Silicon Valley area. So to, to look out across this audience now and see this world of people who are all focused on this, this piece of technology, super exciting. Um, so take note of my Twitter handle. Uh, unfortunately, this isn't a conversation. I get to stand up here and talk for now three minutes and 55 seconds. It's going to go quick, but happy to continue chatting with you afterwards. What I thought I'd talk about today uh, is actually a conversation that started as most great conversations do uh, late at night after a few cocktails. Uh, and this, this conversation happened a couple weeks ago with a few colleagues and a couple customers of mine. We started talking about what was going on in the BI market, and uh, we kind of landed on this term, peak BI. Now, some of you who are in the oil and gas industry maybe get the reference, or if you're an environmentalist, uh, to peak oil, right, which is this term that draws its roots back in the 1950s. Uh, a guy named Marion Hubbard did some research. Uh, he was a geologist. Uh, basically came up with the theory that uh, all fossil fuels have this production curve that's sort of bell-shaped, uh, and that we were rapidly, at that time in the 50s, approaching peak oil, meaning that uh, no matter how more advanced the drilling technology gets, uh, the, the output and production would, uh, would, would not increase. Uh, so this idea that we were talking about over beers one night was peak BI. Preparing for this talk, I started doing some research to see if anybody else had landed on this term, right? I didn't want to come up here and steal somebody else's thunder. So Googling, I came up with something called Peak Beard. Thank you, Google. This was a little disturbing. Uh, apparently, beards have become really, really popular. Uh, some very interesting beards have become really, really popular. And there's actually research going on uh, at University of New South Wales in Australia uh, where they've, they've actually found that the attractiveness of beards declines uh, inversely with the proportion of people in the world who are wearing beards at any given time. And so they came up with this theory of peak beard, uh, which is basically saying we're now reaching the point where people stop growing beards because they're no longer attractive, because they're no longer unique. Now, this has absolutely nothing to do with peak BI, but I just thought it was so bizarre that I had to share it with the audience today. So back to peak BI. Uh, some really weird stuff is happening in the BI world. And to me, this is interesting because BI is the front end that most people consume data out of Hadoop or databases. All the infrastructure technology that we build, this is the front end, right? And amazingly, Click Technologies, terrific company. You know, they've apparently put themselves up for sale. Crazy activist investor fight where they're arguing the company's wildly undervalued. Tableau, partner of ours at Pivotal. Hugely successful company, really terrific software. Overnight, one, uh, about a month ago, their stock dropped in half. Right? Nothing changed. Technology didn't change. Infrastructure didn't change. Uh, the world sort of said, hey, these companies are, are suddenly worth radically different than what we thought they were yesterday. And so the conversation that we started having that night over cocktails a few weeks ago was, have we reached a point where the saturation of BI tools uh, is complete? meaning that for every new tool that's introduced, like my friends uh, Sharmila Mulligan at Clear Story or Zoom Data, when they introduce a new product, uh, does that remove a user from one of the other companies in the BI space? Right? This was the theory of peak BI. We said, well, that's concerning, because we're all building platform technology. We're collecting all this data. We're doing all these interesting things. BI is the front end, right? I mean, that's why we're all building data lakes. Um, and, and with that data lake, Right? I mean, this is where we're going to do all these amazing things that Doug and Jack and Eric have been talking about all morning. Like, the data lake's really important. If we don't have a front end to that, what does the world start to look like? 
And if you start to dig into to data lakes, I mean, even a year and a half ago, Gartner was kind of calling BS on this whole term, right? They were like, well, it turns out data lake doesn't actually work the way you think it does. It's not going to be the value. A lot of my more uh, critical friends like to call it a data swamp. It turns out this is not just uh, a few pessimistic folks. Google tells us there's you know, 40 million different references to a data swamp. And my reaction to this was, what? That's terrible. Like, this is the thing that we're all working on. There's thousands of people in the room here today. We're all excited about this. This can't be good. What's happening here? And so my view is that you know, really what we're driving towards here is delivering information in context. And that context is what wins here. And so while we may have reached peak BI, that actually doesn't change the outcome that we're all driving towards here, which is really compelling information sourced from amazing volumes of data, that the way we get to that is actually by delivering this information, not through BI tools, but in the context of applications that we use every day. You know, I took Uber down from San Francisco this morning, and it tells me that I'll have a car in, you know, in front of my door in three minutes. Amazingly powerful in context, very, very useful. Behind that is the right platform and the right architecture, the right algorithms, amazingly complex process of data integration and analysis to produce that very simple result. And those are the types of things that we're doing at Pivotal. So my time is up, but if you'd like to learn more, find me on Twitter or at our booth here today. Thank you very much.